It's interesting that today the brother entered there in the church. You're not coming back. Now they're saying, you're not, has, you have not gone anymore. They are conscious. They are interesting. <laughs> and now I'm going to stay just one week. I, or I will stay in Boston. So I left Boston because of the cold, but now they come here, it's the same. <laughs> now it's time to go home. <laughs> Very well. I had a message on the first, but now it's on Monday. The message passed on to the church in Brazil. But we are going to speak about this message on the first today for you, which was an instruction that was supposed to be given on Mondays, but we don't have services on Monday here. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of the prophet Joel, chapter 2. Joe 2 from uh, verse 28. Joe 2 from 28 to 32. And it, it shall come to pass afterward that I will. Do you define? Let's go. At the end of the Old Testament, Hosea, there was a Joel. Yeah, something else entered there. Yeah, harder than my message. One of these days, oh, I turned on the lead of. Uh, Teapot's going to fly. There are some people that are really hot in the fire. And it shall pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit on those days and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the sun into blood before the com coming of the, the great the great and awesome day of the Lord. And prophet Joel is a prophet prophet that prophesies practically, uh, I would say almost exclusively regarding the church, and such, in such a way that for a long time there was a tendency that the theologians, the Jewish theologians, they took they took the book of Joel out of their canon because it was a prophet that does not emphasize Israel. In no moment he, he emphasizes Israel. He begins the prophecy speaking of the, all the inhabitants of the earth. His prophet, the prophecy of the prophet Joel was there universal. That's why he is the prophet of the Old Testament in spite of if that Isaiah speaks a lot about the church, but Isaiah speaks more about Jesus. That's why Jesus is known as a messianic prophet. And there is, or there are a few comparisons with the book of Isaiah, and they said that Isaiah is the small Bible. In the same way that the Bible has 66 books, Isaiah has 66 chapters. A few make a comparison. And, but in fact, Joel, was a prophet of the Old Testament that speaks the most about the, the church. The whole prophecy is geared towards the church. He ha doesn't have a chronological order. For example, the first chapter speaks about the end of the church. Second chapter speaks of the beginning of the church. And the third speaks of the judgment of the nations, which is the part most that's going to be almost uh, into the book of Revelations. We are beginning the year 
Of course, each time that he passes, we are on a countdown for the rapture of the church because everything. So you, you may have an idea. The Jews. I'm not making any prediction. I'm um, always making a prediction. No, I'm, I'm not doing that. But the Jews, they say the fall. The Jews. The Jews say that one ger generation lasts 100 years. The Jews say this, right? On their own county, a generation lasts 100 years. The Bible says that the countdown of the church begins when the fig tree is blossomed. is the first sign of the rapture. The first sign of the rapture is Israel. So Israel is the fig tree blossoming. So Israel became a state in 1945, becomes, becomes in 1946 a nation considered by the United Nations and the one that gave the decisive vote was the Brazilian. was a draw and the, the president of the commission was a Brazilian. And he gave the vote to consider Israel as a nation. And there are even streets with his name in Israel. That was the first prophetic point of the rapture of the church. That's why some say that the generation of the signs began in 1948. So if a generation less is 100 years, he cannot go beyond 1948. I, Amadeus had a prediction. I'm not saying this. I'm saying what the Jews, the Jews are saying. I'm not making any prediction. Do not interpret me. May come closer than that. Uh, may God listen to me. May be much sooner than that. So the prophet Joel here he shows the beginning of the church. How the church begins. The church begins with a different disposition as opposed to the Old Testament. And Prophet Joel speaks of it when he says the following. In the last days, he is saying, he is, he is speaking of the Gentilic period, the period of the Gentiles. The Gentilic period is, begins in the Babylonic Empire. So the Gentilic period described here, the last days they begin on the Pentecosts. That's why Peter mentions this. So the church begins on the Pentecost. And how does the church begin? It begins with a different disposition compared to the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was punctual. In other words, he acted in an isolated way individually. And the whole people didn't have access to the Holy Spirit. If you see the story of Samson, you understand clearly how the Spirit operated in the Old Testament. He didn't remain. He was punctual. He went and acted in you see Samson. I remember when I was young, before I became a Christian, I went to the movies and I saw the movies. I sense and I see a man of almost, almost two meters of height and with thick arms and you kill everybody. No, no, that was, was not true. Samson was not a gigantic man. He was a normal man. He was a, a regular man. And the secret of Samson was not his physical strength. He didn't have this physical strength. His secret was the promise that was upon him. He, was, he had a promise of him, over him. So his hair, his, it was a promise. So he was in prison, nothing happened to him. He would tell things to Delilah, and Delilah said, oh, his strength was this. And they would tie him up, and he would greatly get tied up. But when the spirit would take possession of him, he would break everything. So when the spirit came in specific times, the prophet Joel said in the period of the church, the Spirit will be poured out upon everyone. So the Spirit being poured out over every flesh doesn't mean that the whole world will become Christian before Jesus comes. This is not true. No, no, we're going to wait. When Jesus is about to come, the Spirit, no. In fact, there are many countries that 
went through the dispensation. Europe had their own revival. America had their own revival. So the peoples in different specific moments. So what the prophet Joel said is that the spirit will be poured out every every flesh. So you're not going to be a specific man. You're going to be a special person. There's going to be one a whole, a group. That's why in the new covenant the Lord makes he took the bread and the, the Holy Supper. He said, this is my bread and the, and the wine is my blood. He speaks of the fellowship. Fellowship is something that only uh, appears after the resurrection. So the Pentecost shows what? Shows a new phase. The Holy Spirit went upon the, the church, preparing the church for its journey, for its walk. So the Holy Spirit was, was poured out. So the Joel prophesies about this, about the pouring out of the Holy Spirit upon the church. And there, there is a moment of the beginning of the church. There are two very important points that the church needs to know. The beginning of the church and the end. There are two, and we can even say that the first church, which is the church of Ephesus, and we'll see in the biblical schools, and the one of Laodicea, the two extremes the operation is the spirit in the church of Ephesus. In the beginning of the church was the waking up of the church. So the Holy, Spirit, the Lord prepared the church for the departure of His spirit. When the Lord uses the church in order for the word to, to be complete, in the canon, Christian canon appears. It's all part of the first church. And the last church, which is the church of the near, the Holy Spirit prepares the church for the sounding of the last trumpet. Those are the two situations. The difficult message of the first church, which was to say that Jesus resurrected and he was alive, was something unthinkable. Everybody saw him on the cross. Didn't Jesus had not appeared to anybody, only to the church. So nobody knew. Everybody knew that he had died. Everybody knew that he had been buried. But now people say that he was alive. It was and absurd. That was the message of the church. The soul will, will sow. So the new message is so absurd as the first. In the same way that the first message was an absurd when the church preached that Jesus was alive, the last church is preaching the absurd that Jesus is going to come back. Those are absurds, but they have a prophetic relationship. It is interesting. See, the moment of the church today we're living is the spirit of the church. The prophecies are being fulfilled. Prophet Joel, he says the following. In the beginning, he says, Sound the trumpet on Zion, and all the inhabitants of the earth may be perturbed. Chapter 2, which is the chapter that speaks of the period of the church, and, and describes the period of the church, the beginning of the chapter has nothing to do with the end of the chapter, which there is no chronological order, but now sound the trumpet in Zion, shouting a high, loud voice, uh, mount of my holiness, and perturb all the inhabitants of, of the earth because the coming of the Lord is near. So he begins to describe, Prophet Joel describes the moments in which, the fractioned moments of the church. So, as I said, the first chapter describes the moment of the church today. I'm not going to enter the details because it's another message. Second chapter described the beginning of the church, especially from this text here. And chapter 3 described the judgment of the nations. So see one thing. See on, still on chapter, chapter 2, it says, he says the following. Proclaim this in amongst the nation about a war. Conclaim that valid ones. Come all the arms, uh, men of the world, because the swords of... Uh, of all tools and take hold of your tools. What the prophet is saying is the following. There's a moment of the church in which the church has to change in, uh, its, comp its behavior. Transform a sickle and into a sword. 
Transform a sickle into a sword. Transform two tools of work into two weapons of war. So it's a, a change of behavior. Why a change of behavior? When the prophet Nehemiah speaks of the rebuilding of Jerusalem, what does he say? He says that uh, we needed to rebuild the city, but be vigilant. Each person working, but be vigilant because the enemies were around them. Nobody wanted the Jerusalem to be rebuilt because they knew that where Jerusalem rebuilt would be terrible for their enemies because it was a city that was unbeatable, could not be defeated. So say to the weak that I am strong because this moment is a moment of weakness. So I'm tired. I, Lord, I don't know. I'm so discouraged. This is um, uh, the saying of the weak. So I'm not going to deserve. I'm so, I don't know. I'm so discouraged. Some days I just want to, I don't know, to disappear. So then tell the weak, I am strong. The moment of the church at this moment is not like this. We're not going to, we're not going to the arenas. Can you imagine the people that were, were, were thrown to the arenas to be killed there, devoured by lions? We're not being devoured by lions. We are all a little fat here, but we are not being, not going to the arenas. Nobody's being burned on uh, fire pits. Nobody's going to the crosses. Everybody drive uh, with BMW, Mercedes. Uh, you know, in Brazil, they they drive a beetle, but they are all okay. Sometimes they drive uh, ride on bicycles, and the bicycles are so nice. Everything is all right. Even with bicycle, nobody's going to the fire pits, right? The fire pit that they have is uh, barbecue. It's barbecue of uh, cow meat, not human meat. Everything is fine. Nobody's upset. But that church that suffered, suffered. But that church was faithful. The prophet Joel speaks here about, about what? Why? Because the day that we're living in perturb all the inhabitants of the earth because the day of the Lord is near. My brethren, the Lord has always said, spoke to his people. And the Lord stopped speaking to his people when they departed from him. When Israel departed from God, God stopped talking to them. To them. But in every moment, Israel remained in the presence of the Lord. God spoke. God is speaking. And at this moment, God is speaking to his church. In the time of Israel, many things happened. And the trial there, the enemy always fought to to destroy one thing in Israel. If you go through the Old Testament, the whole Old Testament, you see a tremendous struggle against the service. Even the time of Moses was the service. Everything was geared towards the service. That's why the great struggle struggle of Elijah with Ahab and Jezebel was the service. She didn't want the service. She wanted to destroy the service. Her greatest objective was destroy the service. In the New Testament, it was not, it was not the service. The New Testament is the project because the project is what was linked to the church. And the project is Jesus. That's all. Every action the, of the enemy in the, in the New Testament is not the service. It's the project. It's Jesus. The enemy does not interfere on the service. If you want to have a service, you can have it in any way you want. What does he know? He knows that the promise is, is not the service. The promise is the project. Who is the project? Jesus. So he, he deviated pro from the project. So he says, you know, we're going to be working through works. Like Luther mentioned in the 16th century, you will be, will be saved if you're good, if you be saved by Mary, and all those th things can be easily understood. You know why? Because the enemy puts men to uh, rationalize. 
It's easy. It puts man into his own reason. And reason is incredible. And you begin to compare reason, you see one thing. I was born I uh, was born in a uh, city, but I went to that, that place in Villa Valley when I was six years old. I was raised in that place. People on the street, they, uh, I always lived with them. I saw them all grow up there. The friends of my mother, when they need one thing, they don't seek me. They don't seek me. None of them. The doctor, no, they don't seek me. They don't even call my secretary. Oh, they call my mom, and my mom tells me. And my mom says, I'm sending someone to see you. What about mom? I'm sending someone to, for you to see and take a look at her. Okay. I cannot schedule because it's the day that she sets up. I, mean, I cannot charge because she sent. They can come whenever they want, and I cannot charge because of my mom. If she says, she says that. It, picks up the grandchildren and she said they're gorgeous but you were like them if the mother tells the son that the child is gorgeous I cannot deny anything to her <laughs> so imagine Jesus is in the same way if we want to ask Jesus I don't have intimacy with Jesus it's so difficult I'm going to ask the mother the mother and then the mother asks him he would never deny anything to the mother so the enemy places you to rationalize and deviate the project that's what the enemy did so what the, the world does put voices voice of religion voice of reason voice of the ideas voice many voices the world is listening to many voices but they are not listening to the voice of the spirit and the book of revelation says who has an ear listen to what the spirit tells, tells the, the church and the spirit is speaking but he's speaking to everyone is not speaking to everyone. But this is a moment of decision. That's what the prophet says. Crowds and crowds in the valley of the decision. This is a moment of decision. It's a moment of definition. So the prophet says, at this moment, it's not a moment for you to, to be weak. This is a moment for you to say, say, tell the weak, I am strong. And, or in other words, transform. <coughs> Transform the, um, the tool of the fields into a sword. Now it's a t transform a sickle into a spear. So it's a moment now. So it's a moment for you to use the word. To edify the ground, is the clay. You know? Everything is all right. But the moment is now for the word. And the word is, is no reason. It's the word in the revelation that reaches the far. So the spear and and the sword and the spear that reaches uh, afar, which is the re revealed word, is not connected with the reason. This is the moment, and that's why when Joah saw Jesus glorified, somebody told him his name is the word. So, why John saw John saw Jesus with the robes, garments sprinkled with blood? So, the word speaks of the spirit. So when you hear the word spirit, what do you have? You have the living Jesus. And at this time, you have to overcome a battle against the world and against everything that is out there. How are we going to be victorious in this moment? What is around us? How are we going to be victorious? The ideas. It's incredible, the ideas that people have. And sometimes their ideas are very uh, impressive. The other day I was I was seeing on Brazil um, a news channel and they interviewed a correspondent from here, from New York. And the guy said, how was the this word of, uh, of the present trans transferring the embassy of Tel Aviv to Jerusalem? He automatically recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And the newsman said, I interviewed uh, 
a scholar from the American government, especially the president, and he said, What's, what a crazy thing that he said. He's a scholar. Look, so look what the crazy thing that he said. He said the following, that he, he heard the decision of the president, he heard a group of evangelicals, uh, crazy evangelicals that keep saying that Jerusalem is being prepared for the place where Jesus is going to come back. So, so people is going to go and we're going to be left. Uh, you're right. He, he left, but he's going to be he's going to be left behind, and they're going to suffer because they're going to stay for the great tribulation. They're going to stay for the great tribulation. Why? Because the moment in which we are living now, the moment in which we are living is the the beginning of the pains. They are not the pains yet. We are seeing the beginning of the pains. They go all the way to the rapture of the church because the pains, they are not for the church. The church is not going to go through it. Why is it not going to go through it? Because the judgment, the world is upon a judgment. But the Bible says that the just will live by faith. What faith? The faith that is in this world out there? No, it's not. There's faith. The faith that is in the life of the church. It's, it's the rede redemptive work. It's not the physical faith. It's not the faith of the creative work. It's not the rational faith, as amazing as it might sound. The faith that we live, even in the evangelical environment, is the rational faith. People believe in the glass of water, right? When I was Catholic, I would never go to the Mass until they, they sprinkle water. If there was no um, drop of water that fell onto my head, I would just watch the following Mass. A drop of water had to fall on my, my head. Now, uh, evangelicals, they Pentecostal, they use a glass of water. It's not holy water, it's now a drop of water. It's a glass of water. I'm not criticizing anybody, but think. What is this moment that we're living in? We live in a moment in which the ideas, the traditions, the things, the concept, the faith is is material. So the faith is on the glass of water, is on the handkerchief that you buy, and um, a spatula for constructing. You're going to be blessed by if you buy a kilogram of uh, cement uh, when you, when you put on the first. Uh, dough that you use on the construction of the of the house, the house is going to be impenetrable. The faith is on the kilogram of cement. The faith is on the glass of water. The faith on on an object. Somebody was uh, stabbed, and the so now the guy was stabbed but survived. So now everybody touched the, his his suit because the suit is holy suit. This faith is material, it's physical. And the faith is the faith is a firm foundation of what you don't see and of what you see. So this faith doesn't exist now. That's why Jesus said there will be faith when the Son of Man is about to come. What faith? I'm not speaking I'm not, I'm speaking about the mistakes because the church entered after the first century into apostasy and heresies and the spirit that led the church to the mistake of the apostasy it continues operating it didn't stop existing it didn't go away with time it continues the spirit operated there on the primitive church in the beginning of the church trying to bring everything all the mistakes all the failures it continues today and the apostasy and the heresy is not with the world. The world has nothing to do with the heresy. Apostasy is inside of the church. Apostasy began inside of the church. Deviation began inside of the church. That's why we need to be careful and keep the Bible open. Now, what is our Bible? Is the letter. The Bible says that, uh, the Bible itself says that the letter kills. My brother, this beginning of the year, is a year also of reflection. Firstly, where are we? Because as it was said, the 
church is a master when it finds in the word the time in which it the church is living. If the church doesn't have this idea, then they're going to preach a bunch of things. They, they preach that Jesus saves, that's all right. They preach again Jesus cured, that Jesus does miracles, and finds job, but doesn't preach the most important one, that Jesus saves, because it's the central message. But in the moment in which we are, Jesus is about to arrive. And that's why we need to be paying attention. So it says, the Spirit has been poured out, the church that begins, the moment in which we are living, what? the beginning of the pains. We are walking. If you go and see the situation of the world today, the crisis, a people without a direction. Sometimes people seeking many things. I mean, here, uh, you see in Europe, and immigration is a terrible thing. When you go to Italy, you are amazed with the, the Albanese entering. It's like Cuba entering here, coming through boats. And half of them dies in the ocean, and the press does not publicize it because it's shocking. Children um, appear on the shore dead. A few days they showed an incredible news of the children showing up on the shore dead. People escaping war, escaping the famine, escaping misery, escaping everything. We live in a moment that is very serious. The church needs to reflect the moment it's in which it's living. Because the crisis, but America doesn't have crisis. Oh, America has crisis. Has crisis. And sometimes the crisis is much more profound than it, what it looks like. And maybe it's not a problem. Maybe the crisis in the mind. In the mind. This period now for you, I saw in a Congress once, the index of this period of uh, winter, the period of uh, the index of suicide in the United States is very high. Did you know that? And there is a lot. So everybody has problems. So you're fighting here, you're working in Europe, Africa. It is a difficult moment for the entire world. So I said here, I, I probably said, uh, spoke about the judgments. Here, here. The church of the moment is a church that is getting ready. The church needs to know this, needs to understand this. The church left. The or it came to our days. We live in this period, which is the period of uh, the beginning of the pains. The church will be raptured, and after the pe period of the beginning of pain, no, no, the church it will be raptured, and then, after the rapture, it will come the three last trumpets, and then the great tri tribulation. Israel spent only half of the seven years. Is Israel is going to spend the half of the seven years in the other seven, in the other half is prosper, and then Armageddon will arrive and send another message. But it's all being prepared. Every day that it passed, this time is coming near. So we need to be get ready. We need to get ready for this moment. We also need to get ready for what is going to be around. Uh, here in America, for example, maybe the, the struggle is not going to be physical. The, the fight is going to be in the mind. The enemy, when he is not able to do this, the lot of judge, Judas, speaks about that. And the fight in the mind. He is a spiritual being. He doesn't know what you think. But he sees you. He doesn't know what is in your heart, in your mind, but he sees you. And he understands the things and tendencies. He acts exactly. If you see, Jesus allowed. Look how the Lord does. In the same way the Lord allowed the primitive church to die in the arenas, God uh, allowed the enemy to tempt Jesus. Can you imagine? How daring. The enemy went to tempt Jesus. And God allowed it. You know what he did? You know what he did? He even quoted the Bible to Jesus. Can you imagine? How daring. He quoted the Bible to Jesus. And then he says, 
He speaks to Jesus and he speaks to you as well. It's difficult, huh? This situation, you in America, huh? It's difficult. And where is your faith? Is is your God is, is isn't your God powerful? Then you say, Yeah, you know, you're right. Yeah, I'm right. And the pastor preached. And he said, Yeah, yeah. Ah, what faith? What are you talking about faith? If you don't if you don't do whatever you you think is necessary, forget about faith. So he's speaking uh, whispering on your ear. You don't know it is him. If you plead to the blood of the Lord, you see the little two little tongues. It's the same with Jesus. You see the God and His justice and all the other things will be added on to do it. But you go every day to the church, nothing happens. Only struggle. Yeah, it's true. Yes, you're Mr. Enemy, you're right. So Jesus allowed, you know why Jesus allowed him to speak? To serve as a lesson for us. Why did Jesus tell him? Not only out of bread a man will live. But out of, of all the, of the words that come out of the mouth of the Lord. So the angels are all, are all going to catch you, right? Oh, going to go back to Brazil swimming. God is going to give me a blessing. Yeah, go go ahead. The, the sharks are going to eat you up in 500 meters. Do not tempt the Lord. Allow the Lord to speak to your life. Every time that you, the enemy insinuate, you can say, Lord, I know in whom I'm believing. This year is a year of definition. It's a year you, where you're going to be victorious. And as in the other times, the enemy is going to speak, yes. He's going to use whom? Sometimes he's going to go straight to your mind, but sometimes he's going to use your husband. Hey, I'm in difficulty, you see? And look to his eyes and say, blood of Jesus has power. He may even fall to the ground and go rolling. <laughs> your wife, your son is, is going through trouble. The enemy may use him. And even, who even quote the Bible, if he knows, it's the same way that the enemy knows. You see? Tell the weak, I'm strong. Transform your um, farmer's tool into a sword and your sickle into a spear. So the word is going to speak to you. You're going to open up and it will speak to you. And when it reveals to you, it will be fulfilled in your life with no difficulty. Amen. What are we going to sing now? Let's go.
to God. We praise your name, Lord, for our presence in this place, everything that you speak to us every day. Praise your name, Lord. And in your name we say the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, the sweet and tender consolation of the Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. Saturday, 7.30. Only during the week is 8, no, 7 to 7.30, 7.30. And I'll be here. <laughs> and Sunday. I'll, I'll, I'll travel at night. When, so when Sunday is cool, I mean, it's going to be good because I said in the last seminar, I said the following. I'm going because the next week there is a seminar there. So we'll be there. So I said in the seminar the following. And no churches. Never been. Uh, only the church. I know the church. There is a church there. There is a church in Vila Velha. They have two services. The church just, uh, just go, almost go crazy. So I went there to preach, and they began shouting. And I said, oh, "If you don't stop shouting, I'm not going to preach." People shout so much, but it was just two services. And they were. Just, they have two services on Sunday. They have two services. Two services. One service six thirty and another at eight. A lot of people. Five hundred people because six hundred people the capacity of the church is five hundred people. So then have two services and then he's all excited. So then I went there and said I'm gonna see the side of the church. On the Sunday school, I'm gonna come to the Sunday school to see the side of the church because people come on Sunday I don't trust a lot. So then he began he sent a message said, How many? And he was mute. <laughs> so we have two services of 500. How many people were in the Sunday school? And with great difficulty, 240. Oh, it's not good. 200. You have a thousand. Only 240 in Sunday school. So what I'm saying the following on on the, the seminar, church needs to be evaluated by the Sunday school. So I'm gonna come on Sunday. Oh, count. Church of Renewed has. 80 people on Sunday morning. <laughs> well, we're going to have breakfast on Sunday. <laughs> we're going to have a breakfast here on Sunday. School. Okay. So then, so so we went there. And, uh, where is it? Uh, how about the church of Pastor Need? Want to see Sunday night or Sunday morning? No, Sunday school. How is it? Thirty. 
Uh, 30? Oh, the church is over. No, you cannot buy anything now. Don't buy a temple. Sunday school. Look. We found about a month ago a great leader of the Church of Assembly, famous preachers and all this. And he said, look, I thought that you were going to run out. I thought that after the struggle you went through, I thought you were going to be over. You know, you took uh, you took this, this punch and you shook and then you have an advantage. You have a doctrine. Your doctrine is unbeatable. And we said, yes. The church, the doctrine is in, you know, unbeatable because it, it didn't come from the mind of anybody. It came from the Holy Spirit. And we're going to tell you one thing to you. The greatest experience of our service is with the Word. All the service is with the Word. The Word speaking. It's a wonderful thing. I'm, I'm, I'm finishing. Don't worry. I was um, sought after by a deacon. And he said, I'm Adele. Every time the Jeduchi appeared on Sunday school, I would just get up and leave. I don't like that man. And what happened? One day, I went and began to speak. And the Lord began to visit. And I didn't understand anything. I don't like this man. How am I feeling the Holy Spirit? But I began to be so intrigued with that situation. I began to cry. And I didn't understand anything. Lord, what is happening to me? And then he opened it up at the Bible. Lord said, I don't see on this man any crime. So Amadeo was delivered immediately. The word, this word, is the living word. And we overcame all, all our trials with the word. Our battle was overcame with the battle, uh, with, with the Bible. One day I will tell you a lot of stuff with this, but it is the word. And because of this, interesting thing, because in May of 2015, when the church began in 1967, Pastor Jonas they began coming with this message, and the group of 10 people, he, the group was excluded because the Presbyterian Church didn't accept Pentecostals and all these things. And Jesus said, Jonas, begin there. I'm going to help. I have a few resources. I'm going to help. But don't, don't call me about uh, ministry. I don't want to be a, a pastor. So then Amadeo then heard the voice of the Lord. And the Lord told him, I called you. But that's all right. You don't accept it. I'm going to show you what is going to happen to you. Then he saw his death. His death. The wake. Everything. And the emptiness. He woke up crying, desperate. And the Lord said, you see? It's your decision. And then, no, no, no. The other day he said, Jonas, whatever the Lord asks me to do, I will do. So in May of 2015, he said to us, I've never heard that voice that I heard on the early dawn. And now in May 2015, I woke up in the morning with the same call. The Lord called me. I woke up, sat down on the, on the bed, and he said, I want to speak with you. I was surprised. 2015, we had gone through all that trial. He said, I want you to conclaim my people to perfect the understanding of my people on the doctrine quickly and then we begin every, every new topic every new amazing thing it was something that was uh, an amazing speed the revelations they come in an amazing speed every day something new new experience saying I am in a hurry that's when they came the time called soon we live in a very special moment. We have no idea of how the Lord governing of all those things. 
you test the Lord about this. Get the Bible and plead for the blood of Jesus and make a test. You see what is going to happen to you. You're going to open the Bible and the God, God's going to speak and no one, after two years, if you prepare the church the way the Spirit is, preparing, is speaking to us in, within two years of a doctrine unbeatable with the people that will not the same way as the primitive church the word on the hand the presence of the Lord and God speaking is going to be a wonderful thing and that's what the Lord wants youth, the children, adolescent at war, God wants to speak with you everywhere, not only here. The experiences are amazing. If you, uh, we have today um, only, just so you can have an idea about revelations. Only in the book, only on the on the, the wedding of Cana. Do you know how many messages we have written only about the wedding of Cana? 50 messages, different messages, 50 different messages. We have more than 900 messages only about the book of Songs of Solomon, verse by verse. We don't release it because it's going to be impossible. Wonderful things. And you're amazed if you're impressed. Renew, if you pick up the four letters you, that you find in the book of, uh, of Songs of Solomon, you find in the book of Songs of Solomon, you see Smyrna, the church of Smyrna, which is the church of the trial, right? Myr is a trial. My beloved is for me. It's um, a bunch of myrrh. And, but he lives between my breasts. So the church saying, Jesus for me is only suffering. But he lives in my heart. This is something that is notable. It's in the book of Psalms. Not even Solomon understood what he was saying. You see? My beloved is for me a, a branch of myrrh. The church is of uh, Smyrna. The church of Smyrna. Jesus for me is only suffering, dying in uh, uh, arenas and cross and fire pits. Jesus for me is only suffering, but he lives in my heart. Just so you have an idea, a small notion of what it is and what is coming our way. Amen? Pray for these people, for the church, right? Amen? We, the youth, we're going to live a long time, but this, this old man, they are going to die. So we need to give live an inheritance. Jesus is coming, right? We, they are younger, right? We need to, we need to uh, take over for uh, from all these old people. All a bunch of old people here. Uh, on Presbyterian, uh, the bunch of old sitting there on the Presbyterian. I sit on the other side. I see it. I see the side. That's uh, this age thing. It catches. <laughs> Amen. On a trial, pick up the Bible on the trial. Difficult with the, the child, with the husband. Just, just pray. You don't have to shout. Sometimes, God have mercy when she when she's talking. This is not, it's not pleading, this is fighting. Don't plead for the blood against your husband or, or wife. And then uh, it's like with daughter. I understand what you're saying. Plead in your own heart. Don't use the blood <laughs> to start a fight. Plead on your own heart and let the Holy Spirit operate. Amen.